September 24th, 1953, the Polo Grounds, New York City. You're about to see the big fight. The full fight has fought between the challenger, Roland Lestarza, and champion, Rocky Marciano, defending the world's heavyweight crown in a scheduled 15-round bout. The air is so chilly, both men enter the ring wearing sweatpants beneath their robes. Announcer Johnny Addy checks the color of Rocky's trunks just before making the official announcement. From the Bronx, New York, wearing dark trunks and weighing 184 and three quarters, the Bronx Express, Roland Lestarza. Three and a half years before, Lestarza lost about to Marciano by just three points. Roland felt he won that disputed contest and believes he can do it again. In the opposite corner, the unbeaten champion, who won the title from Jersey Joe Walcott in 1952 with a single punch. Wearing white trunks and weighing 185, the Brockton blockbuster, Rocky Marciano. Before the big fight actually begins, let's see how each man trained for the event. Roland Lestarza worked at a camp in Greenwood Lake, New York, a site formerly used by his opponent, Rocky Marciano. Here, Dan Florio tapes the challenger's hands prior to a final workout. At this time, Lestarza weighed 190 pounds. Here, Florio laces the gloves on Lestarza, who is ready now to do some sparring. The challenger wears a head guard as protection against last-minute injuries. Florio, the third man here in the ring, was formerly trainer for Jersey Joe Walcott. Loosening up the neck and shoulders. See you later, boy. Meanwhile, a plane from New York City lands at Grossinger Airport in the Catskills, where the champion is in training. The engines are cut, and out steps Commissioner Bob Christenberry of the New York State Athletic Commission. Greeting him is Al Weil, Marciano's manager. And here's The Rock himself, on his way to a checkup by Dr. Vincent Nardiello. The commissioner and James D. Norris, president of the International Boxing Club, look on. He wears a novel head guard that protects his cheekbones. Formerly, he wore a larger one to cover the nose he injured before the second Walcott fight. Here he is sparring in a hangar near his farmhouse headquarters. The corrugated iron building is used to store planes, except when the rock is encamped at Grossinger's. Marciano's trainer is Charlie Goldman, generally regarded to be one of the most astute teachers in the profession. A final dry-off, and Rocky is ready for the big fight. Back in the ring, referee Ruby Goldstein gives the fighters their final instructions for this 15-round championship bout, and now round one. Rocky Marciano in white trunks moves to the center of the ring. He is in his familiar crouch, but a little more accentuated than usual, a lower stance, which he has been working on in training. He'll keep his left out, chin well tucked behind his gloves, and crowd his opponent. Crowding and slugging. That's Rocky style. Watch this right uppercut by Lestarza that sends Rocky backward. Lestarza throws leather from a classic straight up position. He's a skillful boxer and a solid counter puncher. See how he ties up the champion when Rocky tries to rush in. Already you can see this is going to be a battle of sock versus savvy. Marciano, the powerful puncher against a lighter hitting but more clever Lestarza. Here comes a right-left combination by Lestarza as he backs away. Combination punches are blows put together in sequence. The challenger is particularly adept in their use. Lestarza is essentially a counterpuncher. He waits for his opponent to move in, then tries to beat him to the punch or block and counter over his rival's punches. Rocky, on the other hand, is a crowder, a slugger. He's the favorite tonight, but the champion has had a long layoff. He may be rusty.
Now the Stars sends in a pretty left-right-left -left combination. The challenger was expected to be the heavier man tonight, but somehow lost three pounds between breaking camp and arrival at the weigh-in. How will it affect him psychologically, physically? Rocky moves in with a little shuffle, crowding, always crowding. One thing you'll notice about Marciano throughout the fight is his remarkable ability to throw punches even when off balance. But so far, the Stars has been tying him up rather effectively and blocking pretty well. Roland's always been acclaimed a fine defensive fighter, but he never before has faced such bruising power. A former student at City College in New York, he's the third college man to fight for the heavyweight title, and certain he can win it. So far, the aggressor has been Marciano. There's the bell ending a close round. If you're scoring the fight, call it round one for Rocky Marciano. Round two, 45,000 fans have paid $436,000 at the Polo Grounds to see Roland Lestarza in dark trunks challenge the world's heavyweight champion, Rocky Marciano. Watch Rocky crowd in behind a hard left hook to the jaw that jolts Roland. Lestarza misses with a counter right as Rocky, coming in low, gets under the blow. And round two gets underway with a fast flurry of action. Rocky Marciano going for his 10th straight KO and his 45th conquest, a year and a day after winning his title from Walker. But remember, between that fight and this, The Rock has fought only once. In May of 1953, he met Walker again for a match that lasted just two minutes, 25 seconds, less than a round. That was the total extent of his ring combat during that entire year. And Rocky shows it. He's crowding a lot, but connecting little. There's a saying in the ring that rust accumulates quicker on a slugger than on a boxer. Rocky, definitely a slugger, shows many signs of rust already, and will show more before the round is over. Referee Ruby Goldstein separates the man and taps his head, a warning to Marciano to stop butting. That's another sign of rust accumulating on the slugger. And this is just the first in a series of warnings. While The Rock had less than one round of ring experience during the year leading up to this fight, Roland Lestarza had 30. As he made his bid for the World's Heavyweight Championship, his record was 53 wins out of 56, two by knockout. He lost once before to Marciano, you remember, by just three points, and had waited three and a half years for this return match. But during that time, Marciano improved his style considerably, while Lestarza showed little progress. Roland is 26 years old, three years younger than Rocky. Rocky drives his man to the ropes and with a left hook opens a cut beside Roland's right eye. Throughout this round and the rounds to come, ringsiders could hear Lestarza's corner yelling, stay away from the ropes, stay out of corners. Marciano is devastating in those areas. It was there on the ropes that Rocky KO Joe Lewis, on the ropes that he tagged Walcott for the world's heavyweight crown. Roland has to stay away from those ropes and out of corners because he needs room to maneuver, room to make the moves necessary to blunt the power of the slugging champion. Now watch this. A left-right combination by Rocky draws a beautiful left-hook counter by Lestarza. That's Roland's technique. He waits for his opponent to move, and he follows through with a counterpunch. And there's the bell ending round two. We'll score this frame for Lestarza.
The Florios, Dan and Nick, working on that cut beside Nostarza's right eye. A cut opened by Marciano's left hook in the preceding round. And now round three of this championship bout. No radio coverage, no home television. Rocky Marciano in white trunks opens by slugging away from a crouch. A crouch a bit more pronounced than any he's ever used before. Before the fight, Rocky told this reporter he'd favor that little change throughout the entire bout. The Starza tries two left hooks. And lands another, attempting to keep Rocky away. Marciano still showing a residue of rust, his punches failing to land with their usual authority. Rocky wild with the right as the challenger rolls with that punch and moves to the inside. Rocky ever crowding, looking for that opening, pounding to the body. A warning to Marciano by referee Ruby Goldstein, hitting on the break. That's the second warning the champion has received in three rounds. Rocky missing with both hands still showing signs of rust. The Stars' aim, you can see now, to outpoint the champion, to blunt his power and stay away from his explosive fists. So far in the third round, he's been succeeding. Rocky's goal, simply to mow his man down. Both men evenly matched tonight in height and weight. Roland is 26, three years younger than 29-year-old Rocky, but The Rock is expected to win by a knockout within 10 rounds. Lars Nostarza has been knocked down, but never out. As he himself puts it, I know how to get up. During this round, you find Nostarza doing his best to heed the advice of his corner and stay away from the ropes. In the second round, Marciano pinned him in a corner, then blasted a cut beside his right eye. This fight, by the way, was likened beforehand to the famous Dempsey Tunney series of Sock versus Savvy. The slugger versus the switchster. Another warning to Rocky, warning number three, for a left hook to the body after the bell. At the end of the third round, the tally is one round for Marciano, two for La Starza. That's Al Weil, Rocky's manager, whispering instructions. Behind the fighter stands Al Colombo, a boyhood pal who first convinced Marciano to become a professional boxer. In round four, Rocky continues to move in, to crowd, but La Starza ties him up. He's boxing well, keeping his guard high, and ducking under those shots by Marciano. Watch. The champion is still missing, still ineffective with his power-packed punches. Rocky has the shortest reach, 68 inches, of any past heavyweight champion. And at 5 feet 11, he's the shortest man to hold the heavyweight championship since Bob Fitzsimmons back in the early 1900s. But he more than makes up for those deficiencies with his shattering one-punch one power. His single-punch KOs of Joe Lewis and Joe Walcott are now ring history. He won all 44 of his previous fights, 39 by knockout. No wonder La Starza wants to stay away. Starza has landed some solid shots here in round four, and he leads Marciano on the scorecards of the three ring officials. Experts at ringside are speculating about a possible upset. The year 1953 was full of such upsets. Ezard Charles by Nino Valdez and Harold Johnson. Rex Lane twice by Earl Walls. 
Kid Gavlin by Danny Wamber, Billy Graham by Carmen Basilio. The consensus now, it could happen again. Rocky attempts to get inside, but fails to land. Holding back his left as Ostarza moves in to tie him up. The Rock couldn't find a home for that left. Watch closely. Rocky drives Ostarza into a corner, but the challenger twists right out of it and ties up the champion. His handlers are calling, stay out of the corners. And that's what Roland is trying to do. He knows all too well that Marciano caught Lewis and Walcott against the ropes. Rocky still not too effective, but exerting tremendous pressure. Crowding, always crowding. At the end of the frame, we'll call round four even. Challenger Roland Lestarza in dark trunks is going to find champion Rocky Marciano a different kind of fighter in round five of this scheduled 15 round bout for the world's heavyweight title. He's going to discover that the champion has begun to warm to his task, has begun to shed the rust of his long layoff. Roland will feel Rocky's punches landing with more accuracy, more power. No change in style, though. Rocky still crowding, always trying to put over the crusher. The Starza, the counterpuncher, still using that classic straight-up stance of his, attempting to outthink and outmaneuver his adversary. So far, the fight belongs to the challenger. Rocky misses a sweeping right, and La Starza ties him up in the corner. He's trying to work on the champion's body with a right, but Rocky blocks those punches. Now watch as Rocky connects with a long-range right to the jaw. The best punch of the fight so far. Again, that right. The challenger's hurt. Watch him hold. Rocky's trying desperately to follow through to take advantage of those smashing blows. But you see, the stars are recovering. They're at close quarters again, but Lestarza punches his way clear. The challenger has shaken off the effects of that blow and is coming back strong here in round five. Watch the stars a score with a left-right combination to the head, only to be forced against the ropes by the champion, who's about to land a left hook. Both working on the body at close range. This match, by the way, is the first heavyweight title fight in New York City's polo grounds since 1941, 12 years earlier when Joe Lewis knocked out Lou Nova. Ringside seats tonight are $30, with Marciano taking 42.5% of the receipts, the Starza 17.5%. At the bell, it's Marciano's round. Round six finds the Starza in black trunks, somewhat slow to answer the bell. There's no doubt that Rocky's hard right and his unrelenting pressure are taking their toll. 
Remember, too, that Lestars is down some three pounds from his weight of just a few days ago. Even though the challenger is in superb shape, these factors are bound to affect his stamina. The challenger pushes the champion away. He wants room to maneuver. Now he's about to connect with a left to the head. The stars are being extremely cautious, having felt the power in Marciano's celebrated right hand. Rocky, working behind his left, crowds in to deliver a glancing blow to the ear as the Starza backs away. Rocky is definitely improving as the round progresses. Watch him bob and weave beneath Roland's counter punches. He's not too easy to hit either. Marciano, at various stages of his career, has been helper in a candy factory, delivery boy on a beer truck, landscaper, and a worker in the Brockton Shoe Factory, where his father also labored. He had hoped for a baseball career until his throwing arm went sour. Then, in 1947 Golden Gloves competition, that led him into professional boxing. Roland Lestarza played lacrosse at City College and calls aviation his hobby. He has a commercial pilot's license. And Uncle Joe Lestarza was a professional fighter, and it was he who encouraged Roland to enter the Golden Gloves. He did extremely well, winning 35 out of 36 amateur bouts. Rocky still missing, still having trouble finding the mark. Now let's move up to ringside so you can get a close look at Marciano's next punch. That's the champion in white trunks. Watch his left. Below the belt, that low left brings another warning from referee Ruby Goldstein. Marciano's fourth warning in six rounds. This hard left hook by Marciano snaps Lestarza's head back. Good fighting by Rocky, but because of his foul a moment ago, this round was awarded to Lestarza by referee Goldstein. And now round seven, the turning point. Up to now, the fight has been an upset with the underdog, Roland Lestarza, leading on rounds. Judge Harold Barnes called it five to one. Judge Arthur Susskind, four to two. Referee Goldstein tabbed it even. I gave Roland frames two, three, and six, and called the fourth even. But you're going to see the makings of an upset unmade in this round, for Lestarza has won his last round. The rust of inactivity that plagued Rocky Marciano through the early stanzas is gone. You can see him punching harder, sharper, landing with greater accuracy. Watch. This will be a big round for the swarthy strong boy from Brockton, Massachusetts. Marciano, in white trunks, maneuvers Lestarza into a corner. Watch closely, and you'll see the champion throw a long-range right, followed by a low left. There it is, another foul, and referee Ruby Goldstein issues his fifth warning to Marciano. That's five warnings in seven rounds. Rocky's getting ready to deliver a long-range right, followed by a left hook. The Starza's handlers have continually been warning him to keep away from the ropes and stay out of corners. For Rocky knows how to pressure his man by crowding him to the ropes and into corners. Remember, he pulverized both Joe Lewis and Joe Walkett on the ropes.
Coming up, a beautiful left-right-left -left combination to the jaw by Marciano. The Starza was unable to ward off that barrage by the champion, unable to block or counter. Roland weighed in much lighter than expected, less than 185 pounds, and this may be the first indication that he's running out of juice. You can see the first lines of discouragement etched in his face, and the cut near his right eye has been reopened. You'll see Rocky ducking, then firing his left, banging to the body. This is the rough, tough, crowding champion at his best. A beautiful left hook rocks the challenger in the final seconds of round seven. A round awarded unanimously to Rocky Marciano. Round eight. You can see the change in Marciano, a change that represents a great improvement over his early rounds. Rocky is in full command, punching far more powerfully and accurately. He continually crowds and swings with the full power of his squat body. You're going to see him jar and hurt the stars are here in round eight. And throughout the frame, you'll see the champion plant his punches with full power. He's vicious inside. The stars are throwing fewer punches now than he did in previous rounds. He's tiring under the battering. Watch, a hard right by Marciano drives the stars to the ropes. The challenger trying desperately to hold, to grab, and small wonder. Marciano has ripping power inside. Once again, a hard right by Rocky will drive Roland to the ropes. That's Rocky's strategy to get his opponent pinned against the ropes, then slug away and try to land that right, a right that has delivered so many knockout wallops. Backing the stars to the ropes, Marciano decides to try some uppercuts. Watch. The Starza knows how to block a punch on his own as he picks off Rocky's right with his forearm. But even Marciano's glancing punches hurt. It wasn't until after the fight that La Starza admitted a punch he caught on the forearm in the second round numbed the whole arm. Rocky about to shoot a left hook that snaps the stars' head back. But Roland, still plenty game, will punch off the ropes and counter with his own right. Then Rocky gets right back on top of him. The stars' legs a bit rubbery from that left hook by Marciano, and a fresh cut has been opened across the bridge of the challenger's nose. There's the bell ending round eight. Another frame for Marciano. Roland Lestarza, the challenger, in dark trunks, heading for deep and serious trouble as he answers the bell for round nine. So far, he's fought a game fight, but he's been weakened by the power punching of heavyweight champion Rocky Marciano in round six, seven, and eight. Round seven especially was a bad one for Roland, for that's when the tide began to turn. Up till then, the match had the makings of an upset, a reverse for the heavy favored champion, but now, in round nine, we're going to see La Starza more and more taking on the appearance of a boy on a man's errand. Watch Marciano, all set to wing away with a right that forces La Starza backward. You notice the full leverage from hip to shoulder to wrist that Marciano works into his punches.
Here you'll see Rocky faint with the right, then throw a solid left at Lestarza. Once again in a corner. Lestarza is bleeding from cuts beside his right eye and the bridge of his nose now. And you notice that the challenger has lost much of his agility. Some of his clean cut, upright stance is gone. He seems literally to be coming apart at the seams under these savage blasts. Rocky generates pure power. Rocky crowding in, looking for that opening. He forces him to the ropes again. Marciano about to tag the Starza with a hard right to the ear. And you see Lestarza's legs going rubbery, his knees turning to jelly. They left to the body. Looking for that opening, a left to the jaw. Lestarza is hurt against the ropes. He bobs and weaves. He gets away. Rocky throws him from every angle now. He seems impervious to Lestarza's counters, which have become weaker and weaker. Lestarza covering and retreating, trying to escape the storm of leather, but not succeeding. Rocky's hurting him from short range and from long range as we near the end of round nine. And it's another round for the champion. Round 10. The Stars is doing little now except try to defend himself to stay in there. As he catches a left right, you can see how his left eye is swollen. There's a cut near his right eye, another over the bridge of his nose. Both eyes are puffy. The Stars are catching hard shots to the head, throwing few counter punches. The challenger is living on borrowed time. He was very nearly out in the preceding round. Watch this. Rocky misses a sweeping right and falls. Ruby Goldstein, the referee, signifies no knockdown with a shake of his head. Marciano crowds the stars into the ropes again. In these past few rounds, he's had the stars are pinned in every corner and against every set of strands. Rocky continually attempting to move in and wail away, pounding, pounding. Marciano is a hard man to hit because of his crouching, weaving style and his ever-moving tactics as he shuffles forward. The stars are ready to try a right that falls short. He's missing. Another indication that the challenger is tiring. With his back to the ropes, Lestarza catches a left hook. There it is. He's throwing fewer and fewer punches. He's badly weakened, running out of juice. Watch this power-packed right by Marciano that just misses. The stars are fighting back off the ropes. But Rocky's right back on top of him, ready to deliver a pair of crushing rights to the jaw. Once again, Rocky has forced the stars into the ropes, and now they're back at mid-ring. The stars are holding desperately. Look at him grab Rocky's arm. At the bell, it's another frame, the fourth in a row, unanimously awarded to Marciano. 
And now, round 11, destined to be the final round of this scheduled 15-round bout for the World's Heavyweight Championship between challenger Roland Starza in dark trunks and champion Rocky Marciano. Starza's handlers have covered his face with grease. He has two cuts, one over the bridge of his nose, the other near his right eye. Both eyes are puffy. Now, when Marciano throws in a left, Lestarza holds. He's a tired boy. Rocky looking for an opening to drop that big right-hand bomb. 45,000 fans in New York City's polo grounds, well pleased with the fight they're seeing tonight, many expecting a knockout at any moment. Lestarza wrestles back off the ropes, a game effort but one that has come far too late here in the 11th hour of the 11th round. Now watch this closely. Marciano is forcing the stars back toward the ropes. That's where he caught Walcott, you remember, to win the title, against the ropes. Marciano misses a left hook, then connects with a smashing right, another right, a left, and another right sends the stars are sailing back through the ropes onto the ring apron. Referee Ruby Goldstein gives Lestarza, who's up at five, the mandatory eight count, forgetting in the excitement that the rule does not apply to championships. Rocky swarms all over the challenger to follow through his knockdown and end the fight. And there it is, the finish. Referee Goldstein breaks them up, sends Rocky back to his corner. Roland Starza retires to his corner, a courageous but beaten youngster, a boy who had come on a man's errand and done amazingly well for a while, a boy who thought he could beat the champion because once, three and a half years ago in the garden, he had made a close fight of it. That extra detail of police around the ring apron is to ward off a riot like the one staged by Rocky's Brockton Rooters in Philadelphia after their idol took the heavyweight crown from Jersey Joe Walker. And so Rocky Marciano remains heavyweight champion of the world as he racks up his 45th consecutive triumph and his 40th knockout. He has shed the rust of inactivity and come on to win like a true champion. And those 45,000 fans streaming out into the night had seen a good fight, if not a great one. September 24, 1953, the Polo Grounds, New York. Rocky Marciano versus Roland Lestarza. This was the big fight. September 24th, 1953, the Polo Grounds, New York City. You're about to see the big fight. The full fight has fought between the challenger, Roland Lestarza, and champion, Rocky Marciano, defending the world's heavyweight crown in a scheduled 15-round bout. The air is so chilly, both men enter the ring wearing sweatpants beneath their robes. Announcer Johnny Addy checks the color of Rocky's trunks just before making the official announcement. From the Bronx, New York, Wearing dark trunks and weighing 184 and three quarters, the Bronx Express, Roland Lestarza. Three and a half years before, Lestarza lost about to Marciano by just three points. Roland felt he won that disputed contest and believes he can do it again. In the opposite corner, the unbeaten champion who won the title from Jersey Joe Walcott in 1952 with a single punch. Wearing white trunks and weighing 185, the Brockton blockbuster, Rocky Marciano. Before the big fight actually begins, let's see how each man trained for the event. Roland Lestarza worked at a camp in Greenwood Lake, New York, a site formerly used by, he's a skillful boxer and a solid counterpuncher. See how he ties up the champion when Rocky tries to rush in. Already you can see this is going to be a battle of Sock versus Savvy. Marciano, the powerful puncher against a lighter hitting but more clever Lestarza. Here comes a right-left combination by Lestarza as he backs away. Combination punches are blows put together in sequence. The challenger is particularly adept in their use. Lestarza is essentially a counterpuncher. He waits for his opponent to move in, then tries to beat him to the punch or block and counter over his rival's punches. Rocky, on the other hand, is a crowder, a slugger. He's the favorite tonight, but the champion has had a long layoff. He may be rusty.
Now Lestarza sends in a pretty left-right-left -left combination. The challenger was expected to be the heavier man tonight, but somehow lost three pounds between breaking camp and arrival at the weigh-in. How will it affect him psychologically, physically? Rocky wears a novel head guard that protects his cheekbones. Formerly, he wore a larger one to cover the nose he injured before the second Walcott fight. Here he is sparring in a hangar near his farmhouse headquarters. The corrugated iron building is used to store planes, except when the rock is encamped at Grossinger's. Marciano's trainer is Charlie Goldman, generally regarded to be one of the most astute teachers in the profession. A final dry off and Rocky is ready for the big fight. Back in the ring, referee Ruby Goldstein gives the fighters their final instructions for this 15-round championship bout, and now round one. Rocky Marciano in white trunks moves to the center of the ring. He is in his familiar crouch, but a little more accentuated than usual, a lower stance, which he has been working on in training. He'll keep his left out, chin well tucked behind his gloves, and crowd his opponent, crowding and slugging. That's Rocky style. Watch this right uppercut by Lestarza that sends Rocky backward. Lestarza throws leather from a classic straight up position. Rocky moves in with a little shuffle, crowding, always crowding. One thing you'll notice about Marciano throughout the fight is his remarkable ability to throw punches even when off balance. But so far, the Stars has been tying him up rather effectively and blocking pretty well. Roland's always been acclaimed a fine defensive fighter, but he never before has faced such bruising power. A former student at City College in New York, He's the third college man to fight for the heavyweight title, and certain he can win it. So far, the aggressor has been Marciano. There's the bell, ending a close round. If you're scoring the fight, call it round one for Rocky Marciano. Round two, his opponent, Rocky Marciano. Here, Dan Florio tapes the challenger's hands prior to a final workout. At this time, the stars have weighed 190 pounds. Here, Florio laces the gloves on the stars, who is ready now to do some sparring. The challenger wears a head guard as protection against last minute injuries. Florio, the third man here in the ring, was formerly trainer for Jersey Joe Walcott. Loosening up the neck and shoulders. See you later, boy. Meanwhile, a plane from New York City lands at Grossinger Airport in the Catskills, where the champion is in training. The engines are cut, and out steps Commissioner Bob Christenberry, of the New York State Athletic Commission. Greeting him is Al Weil, Marciano's manager. And here's The Rock himself, on his way to a checkup by Dr. Vincent Nardiello. The commissioner and James D. Norris, president of the International Boxing Club, look on.